wonderful to see you all today. Hallelujah. Wow. First, it's usually hard to speak after you've been crying in the presence of the Lord. Um, but uh, it's good. It's good. God is so good. Oh. As the song say, taste and see that He is good. Yes. He Amen. is good. And His faithful love does endure forever. Amen. Just welcome to everyone joining us in person, joining us online. Um, we're going to bow our heads in prayer. Just come before the Lord and invite the Holy Spirit to minister to us um, wherever we are. Wherever we're, we are gathered. Well, Father, we've come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for you. Thank you for allowing us to taste of you. To see that you are good. And your faithful love really does endure forever. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just minister that reality to everyone that is listening. That we would, everyone listening, would be able to taste and see that you are good. That in you is, is no bitterness. Nothing that would not taste good. Even the things that don't seem good in you, Lord, are good. Lord, you are good all the time. The Holy Spirit, we pray that you would minister that goodness to everyone that is listening right now. The Holy Spirit, you anoint our ears. Give us ears to hear what you are saying. Anoint our minds that we would have the mind of Christ. The mind to be able to receive, to understand those things that you are speaking to us. And that, Holy Spirit, you would transform us from the inside out at the very level of our hearts. Where there is stone, Lord, take it out. Holy Spirit, transform us from the inside out. That we would not just be hearers of your word, but doers also. Walking in fellowship with you. Finally, Lord, anoint your word. Give me the strength to say and to speak as I ought to speak. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us to turn in our Bibles to John chapter 3. Um, we're going to read one verse that we know very well and probably another verse that's right next door that we don't know all that well. Um, but the verse that's right next door is really good too. And So we're going to turn to John chapter 3 find it. <laughs> John chapter 3 uh, verses 16 and 17. Now we probably know verse 16 very well. If you don't, we're going to. But 17 is very important. Uh, and and so we're going to read John 3, 16 and 17. For good measure, we might throw in 18 and 19, too. Um, but we're going to focus on John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. We'll read 18 and 19 as well. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Amen. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth upon him is not condemned. I, I want to speak on this word, condemnation. Condemnation is a weight of guilt that covers you and demands punishment. It's a heavy, heavy 
thing to carry. It, it, it breathes out death. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. Sin carries with it wages. You know the expression, you reap <coughs> what you sow. And if you don't like what you're reaping, consider what it is you've been sowing. Um, yeah, there is a scripture, and I don't know where it is offhand in the prophets. It says, you have sown the wind, and so you shall reap the whirlwind. That's not a good thing. If you don't like what you're reaping, consider what it is you're sowing. You know, if, if you, you don't plant wheat and end up getting canola, that would just be weird. It doesn't happen <laughs> to those of you who are farmers. <laughs> well, this was... But, but you know the difference. Even if they leave it wrong, but you know the difference. The seeds don't look the same. Um, but we reap what we sow. Sin carries with a condemnation. It carries the sentence of death. That's the condemnation. But God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned. This is an amazing, an, an amazing statement. It was love, first of all, that motivated God to send Jesus into the world. We know this. I hope we know this. And if you don't know this, we need to know this. That it was love, not anger, that motivated the Father to send the Son. And it was love that motivated the Father to send the Holy Spirit in the name of the Son. That it was love that motivated all of this. And this is going to be challenging for some of us. Uh, because some of us have, have been used to a very different idea that God is angry. Or Robert Morris uh, say, you know, we disobey God and God got mad. He gave us the law. Got more and we broke it. So God got more mad. Sent us prophets, we killed them. He was still mad. And we send his son, we killed him, and then he's coming back and he's going to be really mad. Um, God would have every right to be mad, um, but it wasn't anger that motivated God, even though the anger would be just. But that's not what motivated him. It was love for us that motivated him to come. It was his love for us. He saw our blindness and our darkness. He saw our sin, our lostness. He saw the weight of guilt that we carry that pronounces death upon the one who carries it. Um, he saw the position we were in. And love motivated him to step into our darkness. That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have beheld His glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And He didn't come to condemn, because that's where the grace comes in. He didn't come to condemn. But that through Him, the world would be saved. Now, I love this word, saved, in, in Greek. It's really interesting. I don't, I don't know very much Greek. Um, when I say it looks like Greek to me, it... You know, so apologies to anybody who does, does know Greek. Um, but, but in the Greek, this is one of the few words I know. It, it's soteria, is the word salvation. And soteria has a lot, has a wealth of meaning. The word soteria means to be justified, made right. It means to be healed. It means to be delivered. It means to be made whole. It, it carries a wealth of, of meaning. It is... It indicates a process as well as a moment. We can say we are saved in a moment. You, you come maybe to the altar or maybe, you know, wherever you are. I mean, you don't have to come to the altar to get saved. I got saved in my dining room when I was pretty small. Uh, with my mom led me to the Lord. Um, you get saved in a moment, but yet the process of that salvation is ongoing. The salvation is ongoing because the rest of your life, you're walking that out of what happened at that moment. I know it's cliche, uh, but they always say a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. That is cliche, but you still have to take one step if you want to go anywhere. 
you know, you don't take a step, you're not going anywhere. You know, the first step to come here this morning was probably to get out of bed. It's probably the hardest step, too. <laughs> Your bed was comfortable. I know mine was. Uh, <laughs> we have to take a first step to walk out this journey of experiencing salvation, of experiencing healing, of experiencing being made whole, that everything was bought and paid for all at once at the cross of Calvary. But we are experiencing what has been bought and paid for. And in it is no condemnation. We're not condemned. We're not condemned. Now, this becomes a bit of a problem in our understanding. This is where the rubber hits the road, so hang on. As one uh, Pastor Francis, if, if you're listening, you'd always say, hang on, anywhere, <laughs> do anything. Um, during our Christian walk, we quite often stumble sometimes fall flat on our face. Yeah, that's true. But there is no condemnation. There is conviction. There's correction. But not condemnation. Because the thing is, this is difficult for us to understand. And I don't know, I'm probably going to get interesting comments afterwards, but that's okay. Um, not, not from any of you, but probably online. But that's okay. Um, <laughs> The law of non-condemnation is still at work. Just as much the law of, of condemnation would be at work if we didn't get saved. Yeah. In other words, if I don't give my life to Christ, no matter how long I live, the law of condemnation will be at work. Eventually my life will end, and I'm going to experience eternity with the law of condemnation. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. Whether I sowed it, you know, I lived to be 110, and I did it 80 years ago, 90 years ago. It doesn't matter. Sin doesn't expire. Mm. But if I give my heart to the Lord, I'm not in condemnation. Now, what happens then when I fall? Because you're going to. And, and this is a hard thing. This is where the rubber hits the road. What happens when you've messed up? What happens? Are we condemned by your messing up? You're not condemned, but you will be convicted. In other words, the desire of God is to bring about to, to our awareness the things that are contrary to Him. So that we don't have to walk in that place. So that even if I live to be 110 and I did something 90 years ago, the Lord will say, this thing is not of me. And I don't want you carrying it. I've bought and paid for it with my own blood. You have no right nor business carrying it. That is a hard thing. Um, because sometimes we want to carry it. But the Lord says, come and bring, put down your burdens. And take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. But our stuff is heavy. But God does not condemn us in the stuff. But He does work with us in the stuff. Um, again, this is difficult. Um, turn in, in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'll give you the verse in a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 11 verses 31 and 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Here we have that word again, condemned. It's a rough word. But Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn it. He came into the world to save it. For the condemnation that is upon the world is that the world doesn't want to come to Him. But we who have come, into, come to Him are not under a law of condemnation. When we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. That God says, I don't want you carrying that thing. I want you to experience freedom because it costs me everything to give it to you. 
Um, those of you who are parents, um, mothers and fathers, um, how many of you have liked to do nice things for your kids? Yeah, do, do, you know, give them something nice, you know, maybe you've saved up for it, you've worked hard, you kept it a secret so that on, maybe on Christmas or their birthday or, or something, or some special occasion, and you, you bless them. You want them to use this thing and to use it well, and it costs you to do that. Now, how much more then does God want us to walk in His freedom? Because it costs Him a lot more than any, any money or any worldly riches. It costs Him everything. It costs Him His life. And the Word says that, in Isaiah 53, he made his soul an offering for sin. That it cost God everything for us to be free. For us to not be condemned. For us to walk in life and freedom. I, I'm not... Oh, brethren, I, I pray that I can communicate this well. Because I want us to understand that all of this has been bought and paid for at great cost. It, it's not... Free. I'm not saying this kind of healthy and wealthy kind of gospel. But I am telling you there is freedom and joy and life in Christ Jesus. Not condemnation and not sin and not death. And when we do sin, we come to the place where we recognize there is forgiveness, not condemnation. But it is up to us to come and ask. When we are chastened of the Lord... It's so that we should not be condemned with the world. When we fall on our face, I, I wish I could say if. But it's not an if, it's a when. Mm -hmm. When we fall on our face, when we, we trip up, when we've done something we know we ought not, there is a way of forgiveness made open. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. It will never... Uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful word and it's totally escaping me at this moment. It will, it will not lose its power ever. It, it will never fade away. It is there for all time. It, it was done once and for all. And the way has been made for us to be forgiven. For us to receive life in every place where there's been death. Every place that there's been death in our life. Christ has come to set us free. And the Holy Spirit has come to bring us conviction, but not condemnation. And the Holy Spirit says, this place, Chris, come with me. See here, this thing is not of me. And I'm not condemning you for it. But I'm desiring that you will walk with me and allow me in that place. Because I don't want you condemned. Jesus didn't come into this world so you could be condemned. He came to this world that you would be saved. When we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world so that we would, in fact, the opposite would be true, we would be set free. Condemnation carries with it a sentence. If you're in court, you're before the judge, the judge taps his gavel, I think that's what they're called, that, that hammer, and, and says, Guilty! Four years, take him away. <laughs> there is a sentence hanging over you. And guys are going to come and handcuff you and lead you off. Don't be in that place. But we don't carry a sentence of condemnation. We carry a sentence of life because of Jesus. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to shine light. One of the things, there are so many things. I don't want to limit, limit God. But one of the things... Say, where are you contrary? Where are you contrary to me? So I'll bring you back in line. I'll bring you out. I'll bring you into life and to freedom and to joy. Last week, last Sunday, for those of you who were here, we had a major breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And that Sunday, the Lord impressed on my heart, today is the day of an opening of door for, uh, for freedom. For my people who are held in bondage. Bondage in the heart. You don't have to carry chains physically to be in bondage. You can be in bondage in yourself because you're carrying something you're not meant to carry. But that condemnation is not from God. And so as we came forward and as we 
confess, as we wept, as, as we allowed the Lord to do what the Lord does and break things off, I want to remind you today of why. Why was that? So that you don't have to carry it anymore. So that today is a day of freedom. So that repentance is a good thing. Sometimes we get it mixed up with penitence, but they're not the same. Penitence is you trying to make it right yourself. It doesn't work. It didn't work before, it's not going to work now. Repentance is turning from that which brings death and turning towards the Lord, which is good. It means that the more you turn to the Lord, the more you get to partake of His freedom. The, the more you confess, this is what held me in captivity. This is where I was. This is where I tripped up. You ever hear the expression? Somebody says, because nobody named Bob. Uh, uh, Chris broke his leg in three places. That's terrible. He should stay out of those places. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad joke. Really bad. But when you confess, this is where I tripped up. In all seriousness. This is where I'm set free. I don't have to carry it anymore. It's not mine to carry. Because I don't live under a weight of condemnation. If there is condemnation, it is not of God. God does not condemn. He convicts. And He corrects. And those things might hurt but he does not condemn. It says, this is done for your life yes. so that you could walk in the freedom I've given you, that you might walk in the joy that has been bought and paid for by the cross of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit can impart to you the life and joy that is in the life of Christ in you. Do you all get me? Are we there? That God wants us to walk in freedom. And I'm believing, I'm believing that last Sunday was a breaking off of chains, of bondage, of stuff that is not of God. And I'm believing that today, today is a day of freedom. As we partake of the Lord's table. We have partaken of the Lord's table. For those of you joining us online, um, it, it's a statement of our freedom. When, when we partake of that bread and we partake of that cup, we are reminded of the cost for us to be free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. <coughs> and we are set free. Free from a law of condemnation. Free from the law of death free from the power of sin because sin loses its power. Not that we are sinless, but we are free from the power of sin. When we sin, come to the cross of Jesus Christ. Come and confess. Come and receive His forgiveness because there is forgiveness and not condemnation. I don't have to carry what otherwise I would have to carry. And this is not a license for sin. This is the other thing. Some people then say, well, then you're free to sin as much as you want. No. Absolutely not. No. Because if you understand the cost, you won't want to. That's if right. you're walking in relationship with the Holy Spirit, you won't want to. Because you're going to feel awful. And that's a good thing. <laughs> awful and good thing don't sound like they go together. But they do in this case. <laughs> because that's the conviction and the correction of the Holy Spirit, saying, this is not of God. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop that. Come and ask forgiveness, and come and receive forgiveness. Come and be free. We, we sing this song, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Yes. Are your garments spotless or the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Mm -hmm. We all know that song. If they are, we don't need to carry the other stuff. Because Jesus has carried it for us. We have lots to be thankful for and to rejoice in on this day. Because we are not condemned. We are set free. Hallelujah. Condemnation is not of God. It is pure and simple. But freedom and life are. And Jesus has paid for that. Amen. Thank you. Now,
Today, I want us to come in agreement. Because some of us have been walking around with a lot of condemnation. It's not of God. Now, I don't care. I do care, but I don't care. <laughs> about what you've done. I don't care in the sense that whatever you've done, it's not bigger than God. Amen. Whatever wrong you've done, right. it's not bigger than the cross of Calvary. That's right. It's not greater than the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So whatever you've done and whatever you've confessed to, whatever you've asked for, we need to believe that we can receive that forgiveness. We need to believe that we are free. That there is no condemnation. Romans 8 verse 1 says, Therefore, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now there is a proviso and it is a sense of experience. Who walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. The proviso is, is that you're going to feel condemnation, but that's not of God. That's not of God. Hmm. That's only from the flesh. Mm -hmm. And the flesh needs to be crucified. But there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Condemnation does not belong to you. Freedom does. Mm -hmm. So as last week as we came and we confessed and we repented, and thankfully the Lord is leading us in that, so it might be an ongoing thing. Last Sunday I warned you, this week would probably be hard. It was. Mm -hmm. Because things are getting dealt with, mm. and you're making it right, and that's good. You're letting the Lord open up, check your heart. That's a good thing. But today we're going to renounce condemnation, because it's not yours. It's not yours to carry. You're not condemned. And in that sense, I don't care about what you've done. Because it is not bigger than Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we stand and pray in agreement? Yeah. I've been saying for a while now, we need to enter in. When we enter into what the Lord has for us, it changes your perspective. Changing your perspective will change your entire experience. We need to enter in. For each one of us today, and I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Father, right now we come before you in the name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Lord, by your blood, you have ransomed us. From every tongue, from every tribe, from every nation. The Father, we come from the east and the west, from the north and the south. In your holy name. In the name of him who bought us by his own blood. Who bought freedom. Who bought life. Who bought joy. Who bought healing. By carrying everything that should have been ours to carry. Lord Jesus, you became a curse. That we would become blessed. You died. That we would live. By your stripes we are healed. You were condemned. That we would be forgiven. You became sin for us. Who knew no sin O oh Lord. That we would become your righteousness. And in you Lord there is no condemnation. Lord you have done this. So we, Lord, want to come in agreement with what you have said. We want to break off our agreement with the enemy, with yes. sin, with death, with things that are not of you. The very things that were nailed to your cross that we have no business coming in agreement with. We break those agreements right now in Jesus' name. We break off those things. And we declare we are not condemned. But we are free in Christ Jesus. That we are forgiven. We are redeemed. And we have life that we are who you say that we are. We want to be in agreement with you, O oh Lord, because you have spoken life. You have blessed. And no one can curse but you have blessed. And you have declared us to be blessed. So Lord, help us to walk that out by the power of your Spirit. But we believe it and we receive it this day. And we declare that we are free in Jesus' name. That help us to walk out our freedom by your Holy Spirit this day 
and onwards. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The sun sets free. Is free indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Father, you're so good. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Go forth in the grace of the Lord. Yes. Go forth in his joy. Be free in him. Yes. Even as you work Amen. out things, even as the Lord might bring stuff, <laughs> but know that you are free, you are yes. not condemned, mm -hmm. that you are forgiven. When you ask for it, receive it, yes. believe it, in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, be gracious to you, the Lord bless you, and may he cause his face to shine upon you. In all things and at all times. Amen. 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 Thank you.